Hello and welcome to the Local Music Revolution. I am your host, Ogre. On today's episode, we talk to Julian from the band When All Is Conquered. I found When All Is Conquered on Facebook in a group for local bands. The post was promoting their new EP, so naturally, being the curious soul I am, I decided to download it and see what it was all about. As soon as I heard Seven Years to the Day, I knew I had to get them on the show. So I contacted Julian, and almost immediately, he said yes, and we were off to the races. Julian was great before the interview, after the interview, during the interview, any of it. It was just very, very easy to work with him. He is very, very funny, and he is very, very positive. I cannot explain how positive this guy really is. It's scary how positive he is. But it's contagious, and I can't thank him enough for being so damn positive. It was a very, very interesting way, because that was the last episode that I did before I stopped so that I could get this podcast out. We talked about his writing process and how his band came together. We even talked about how they recorded their EP with some more local talent which that will be talked about later. We also touch on their shows, and I find out that me and Julian have a lot of things in common, including, but not limited to, Greek mythology. That is awesome, guys, because I wrote an EP and an entire album about Greek mythology because I could. I know, right? It's just awesome. But before we finally reveal how awesome Julian is, I need to thank everyone that has been listening to the show. You guys are incredible. Every episode gets better and better, and the response gets better and better. So I really, I truly want to thank everybody. I can't do this without the bands that are backing me and coming onto the show. And I can't do this without their fans. When the bands promote... The fans will listen, and I thank you guys very much, everybody involved. I could not have imagined how this thing would have turned out back when I got the idea and when I was talking myself into actually doing it. So thank you guys very much. You guys want to contact me further? Very simple. You go to facebook.com slash the local music revolution or on Twitter at TLMR podcast. The Local Music Revolution is also on Tumblr, tumblr tumblr.com slash the local music revolution. This whole operation is run and controlled and programmed by WordPress. So go to the local music revolution dot wordpress dot com and follow the blog. That is where everything is. That's where everything is funneled to. Everything comes out of there. All new information, all new episodes, anything I'm doing, updates will be on that blog. While you're there, go check out all of the pages. There's an FAQ now. There is an interview sign-up sheet. There is everything that you need to get involved with the local music revolution. Plus, the best part is, all of the episodes are on there. Also, if you are an iPhone, iPod, any kind of i mac thing from apple go to itunes search the local music revolution in the podcast section subscribe rate comment you can also find the local music revolution on stitcher download the app sign in search for the local music revolution all the episodes will be on both format now that that is out of the way without any further ado this is julian from when all is conquered.
All right, I'm here with Julian from When All Is Conquered. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. I'm here. I'm I'm laughing my ass off talking to you, so everything's good. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, brother. So, um, you don't have a bio that I could read. It made it hard for me to uh, to get a hold of information for you. So, my first question is, who else is in the band? How did you guys meet? Was it true love at first sight? Oh yeah, all <laughs> all all of it, dude. <laughs> um, well, we met. Uh, we met. I met my buddy Bear. His name is uh, Josh, uh, aka Bear. He is the rhythm guitarist. Um, we also have Neil Neil Muncy. He's uh, he's our drummer, and awesomely, his his older brother Mitch Muncy. Uh, he plays a uh, bass, and I myself, um, I I am the lead singer. I do the clean vocals, and I also play the lead guitar. Nice. Uh, nice. We we actually met. I met Bear in high school. Uh, I think we had like gym together, so we've known each other for quite a while. Probably about, oh shoot, I don't even know, man. I want to say like maybe close to ten years, I think. And then um, he sent me a message, probably about I want to say maybe two years ago. Kind of sent me a message on Facebook. He said, "Hey, man, let's have a little jam out." And, you know, he wasn't in a band at the time. I wasn't in a band at the time. I was like, yeah, dude, well, we could do that. So I went over to his house, and that I think actually that night we just started jamming and jamming, and all of our riffs started clicking together, you know, really nice. And nice. then we kind of just looked at each other, and we kind of felt like, yeah, this actually could turn out to be something. So, you know, we just started uh, jamming out more and more, and, um, you know, those riffs turned into songs, and then, you know, started writing the drums to it and all that good stuff and yeah all of a sudden we started you know forking out all these songs so we decided hey you know let's try to record them and get down to it nice brother so um uh you have a release out it's called um uh when all is said and done yeah uh, it has four tracks on it and um can you talk about how that came into um fruition oh yeah well we didn't know when I wanted to write the songs, we didn't really know where I wanted to go with it. You know, um, you know, did I want to tell a story? Did I want to talk about something in specifically? Um, it was just kind of like little ideas all that I've, you know, that kind of, you know, came together. Like for instance, um, like winter winds, um, that one, I remember being in history class in high school and I'm not 100% sure, uh, don't quote me on this, I believe it was in World War I where the Americans were fighting the, um, fighting the Germans, and my history teacher said that there was a little, like, myth that on Christmas Day, both sides decided to stop the fight, and they heard chants from across the field, you know, both sides were, you know, both enemies were in the trenches, us and, you know, the Germans were in their trenches, and all of a sudden, it was just, it came dead quiet, it was in the middle of the night, and you couldn't hear anything, there was no gunfire, there was no shouting, there was nothing, all of a sudden, you just heard, you know, chanting, almost like singing, and you started, you, you saw lights from, you know, from far, and all of a sudden, the Americans and the Germans, they got together, they, and they kicked back, and, you know, they sang songs, and they, uh, you know, drank together, and they just had a good old time, just because it was, you know, around Christmas, nice. it was around the holidays, and then, you know, the very next day, everybody just walked back to their to their areas, and then they just kept on fighting like it was nothing. Does that story so, also, does it include the, the whole, they played soccer together, or something like that? Yeah, it was like they played, like, yeah, they were playing soccer, or they were playing, you know, some kind of, some kind of sports. But it was almost like they were having just like a get together, you know. They kind of forgot that they were fighting. They, yeah. you know, they forgot they were at war with each other, and you know, they just kind of got together and had a day of peace. Yeah, man, that's that's actually a really, really good story. One of the the better stories that comes out of war. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's kind of what the what the main thing was about for me. Um, so uh, when you're writing, um, do you? How does the writing process work in your band? It's different for everybody. Um, is there anything crazy that you guys have to do? 
Absolutely, dude. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, the funny thing with, with me and Bear is uh, for him, he likes to, when he writes songs, he's the type of person that he likes to sit down and he'll, uh, he has to sit down and, you know, write on a riff and, you know, one riff at a time. When for me, uh, I can actually fork out something right then and there and just kind of build off of it. And we, you know, we can write a song or I myself can try to write a song in about 20 minutes when he likes to kind of take his time and, you know, take a couple of days on a riff or, you know, try to kind of wait it out to see what other ideas and what other riffs can come out to. So uh, I didn't really know that, you know, at first when I, I just started working out all of these, um, all of these different riffs and started shooting it up, uh, you know, shooting it at him and he started coming with stuff right back. So I was like, Oh sweet. You know, we can click like this and we can just write songs on the, you know, on the spot. But it wasn't until later on where he was like, hey, man, you know, let me uh, take this riff. I think it, we had like a little bit of a look of a writer's, you know, writer's block. And he goes, let me take this riff and, you know, let me work on it at home. And, um, you know, let me see what I can come up with. He goes, that's, that's the best way I do it. And we were writing songs for a good while already. You know, I think we were like six months in. And I was like, oh, dude, <laughs> you never even told me. I didn't even know. You know, we never really talked about how we write riffs, you know, together and everything. So I didn't even know, I had no clue that he would rather, you know, work on one riff for a couple of days and go home and practice it over and over to see what else comes up with. So, you know, we, we decided, you know, all right, it takes a little bit more time and, you know, go home and see what else we can come up with. And we've actually coming up with some really good stuff just by taking our time rather than trying to fork out everything, you know, on the spot. Yeah, man, I, I've actually experienced that. Um, in different interviews, I've talked at length about uh, my writing process. I actually have a, a studio, the one I'm using right now to record this podcast. Um, I, it's in my apartment. It's just a second bedroom. I have everything to record a, a, a metal record. Nice. And, um, um, my writing process, it's evolved. I, I released two albums and an EP in the past couple years, and this third one that I'm working on, it's been extremely slow and tedious. Um, oh. but, yeah, but for me, the thing is, um, like you said, you, you take your time and everything, and it comes out so much better than you thought it would. Oh, yeah. And, and to me, I was surprised because, you know, I was always on, I was always on kind of like the writer's to the point where, okay, you know, I'll write something right then and there. The, you know, the other guitarist, he'll, he'll add on to something that after that. And, I, you know, I'll just keep on messing with things right then and there and try to fork out, you know, like a song within, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and bam, there it is. Oh, okay, we like it. And then, you know, I don't want to change anything. It's perfect, you know. But, yeah. and you know, in reality, if you just kind of take your time, step back a little bit, and, you know, see what where you really want to go with the song or how you want to make up a bridge or how you want to make it stand out and to catch the listener's attention, the best way to do it, you know, in, in my opinion, what I've learned is, you know, just kind of take it, take it slow, you know, work at it one riff at a time. So that way, every time you come back to the song, you have a fresh mind, you have yeah. a fresh mindset. Yep. Yeah, man, that's that's one of the wonderful things about writing music. Everybody has their, their specific way. Yeah. I love the fact that there is there should be no rules in making music. Um, oh yeah. Granted, absolutely. there there are parameters that you have to follow to in order to make it sound decent. Um, yeah. It's like one. It's like being a five year old, and and I love that. And you're like, what's this sound like? <laughs> How can I put this yeah. in there? <laughs> you know, and, getting uh, new ideas, trying new techniques, all of that good stuff. Yeah, man. It's it's a wonderful time, and. and it's one of my favorite things to do in my pastime. I, I just I can't get enough of, of creating music. It's just so fun. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, I remember, you know, I remember getting my first guitar, and I I actually started playing guitar in the uh, summer of my sixth grade. Oh, wow. And I remember my parents, they got me a classical. They got me a nylon string classical guitar. Oh, nice. And, um, you know, I started, I first started, you know, learning through a video, they taught me, you know, like this old school, like flamenco, desperado sounding type music. And, you know, I just, that was, that's when I knew that was my very first um, eye opener where I really started determining myself to, to really be, I don't know, just, I was just really inspired by it. You know, I, I, um, I never practiced or spent so much time on something 
other than my video games, you know, I would, you know, <laughs> yeah. be all, obviously be, you know, stuck on video games all the time. But once it came to my guitar, there was nothing that could help me back. I remember I felt like I was on top of the world. Whenever I was, it was just me and my guitar. I'd be in my room. I would practice. I would actually walk to school. I remember I, I uh, our, my old house where I used to live at, it was actually down the street, probably about a good 10 minute walk from, from my junior high school. And I would take my guitar every other day and I would walk and I'd put the strap, my guitar case and and the back of my, uh, on my back. And I would practice before school. I'd practice on the way home. I'd practice at lunch. I mean, I was just all about it, dude. And, um, you know, that's what really kind of opened my eyes. Like, okay, this is something that I'm definitely going to try to pursue. This is something that I want. And, um, the feeling, the feeling of, of being able to be stuck on an instrument you know, I remember where I would have an extremely bad day and I would be so upset or I'd be such in a bad mood. And all of a sudden I would, I, I felt like I can just channel all of my negative energy into my guitar. Yeah. And all of a sudden after an hour of playing or practicing or trying to write a, uh, a song, all of a sudden I would look around and I'd be, I have a big old, big old cheeser smile on my face, you know, yeah. uh, big old pearly whites everywhere. And, and, um, I would just be smiling and I'd be happy and I would just feel like so relieved. And, uh, it, and that's awesome. I feel like, you know, my instrument definitely helped me out through a lot of times. And, uh, a lot of inspiration came in through, you know, through my classical music at first. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm really happy that I got to learn classical music first before anything. Yeah, man. Um, for me, I, I'm the same way with the drums. If I have a bad day, I'll come in and just bash the hell out of the drums. Um, for oh, me, yeah. for me, it's just really awesome because I, when I get angry, I just want to break something and, um, <laughs> and instead of breaking it, I'm channeling it and I'm playing the drums and I'm making a noise to kind of, um, emulate the feeling and it, it's really nice for me, you know? So, so I can see where you're saying that, but, um, also on the same coin, I actually started in band in school too. So I know how to read music and all of that. And, um, oh, nice. yeah, it, it like you with the classical and everything, it, it made it way better for me later on. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Learning those small techniques, the, the basics and, and the little things made my drums so much better when I learned how to play the, on the drum set. It, it was just, oh amazing. yeah. Oh, dude, I, I agree 100%. You know, uh, being able to know the amount of knowledge you already knew just by entering at a level, you know, of classical music, um, you know, anywhere, well, you know, from us learning different hand techniques or, you know, for me, I had to use, instead of using a pick, I had to use all, you know, the dexterity of all my fingers. Yeah. And, you know, transferring all of that, you know, using all my fingers on all the strings to just like a single pick, you know, when it came to trying to learn how to do tremolos and, um, you know, different hand techniques or, you know, trying to play really speedy type riffs, uh, it almost came natural to me only because, you know, I started learning all of the early techniques through, through the classical way. So I, I totally, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, man. Um, the, the funniest part about that whole thing is, like I said, I, I learned how to read music and everything. Um, but I learned how to play double bass before I learned how to use the hi hat, and <laughs> that's it's completely <laughs> <Nice>. backwards. <laughs> yeah. so I bet that was that was a bit of a uh, struggle for you at first. Um, no, actually, the double bass. Once I got the motions down, um, it was very easy. Um, nice. Because I had listened to double bass music my my entire life, um, but it was transferring that to the hi hat like learning how to open and close the hi-hat on these little ri- beats and everything um it right. took me it took me months to learn that <laughs> and it's terrible to say but it did. oh no i understand that I, I i can totally feel you on that i remember there'd be times where i would just be gripping the neck of my guitar and i would just be filled with anger and you know i wanted to break it so bad because i couldn't get down just a small simple technique because you know yeah. my hands weren't cooperating right but uh you know, and that that kind of goes to show, like, how determined we are, you know, how determined we were to get, and you know, to, to learn something new or to learn a different technique. It, you know, we would give it our all, and we'd be so into it that 
you know, I would have to leave the, I would have to put my guitar down and leave it, you know, for at least half a day. And then I can come back to it, you know, when I had the right mindset and then I'd be able to try it again. Yeah, man. Um, uh, that's the same thing with the drums. I mean, you know, I, I have gotten to a point now, um, that I am very confident in my ability in the drums. Um, Absolutely. It's an amazing feeling to know that I can play what I want when I want. And if there is something that I can't play, it will take just a little bit of practice. Um, it won't take like months of practice anymore. It will take literally maybe a day or two to get the dexterity down and I've got it. Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a very it's a wonderful place to be as a musician that you have so much confidence in yourself and your instrument and the knowledge you've attained just to be able to do things that that you know it, it's so simple and it, it's wonderful oh yeah man that, absolutely <laughs> to come from you know to kind of look back and say oh man i remember when i didn't even know i didn't even know how to you know hold the drumsticks right or i yeah. didn't even know how to hold <laughs> the pick in the correct position you know what i mean and to go from that to learning a you know a very difficult technique that you know for some it can take up to weeks just to try to master it down as for you know people that have a really well um amount of experience it could only it would only take us a couple hours or you know a day or however you know we just learn the technique down and then all it is is just practice on from there yeah man i mean it, it, like I said, it's a wonderful place to be as a musician. Uh, there, there's nothing quite like having that trust in your instrument. I mean, I know it's an inanimate object, but having the trust in the ability to make that instrument do what you want, um, it's an incredible confidence booster as a person, like, as a whole. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree 100%. All right, man. Well, um... How about you tell me a little bit more about Winter Winds? Uh, is there any crazy stories that went on in that song or, or um, some fun? I think when uh, – I remember when we first started playing it, it was, it was actually – it came together very, very nice. And um, we didn't really have a whole lot of struggles with that song, uh, which we were very happy about. Um, it was almost like – I remember wanting, I just kind of shot out the beginning, that lead part in the beginning of the song. And all of a sudden, you know, Bear jumped on, jumped on the rhythm. He started learning, you know, just kind of going, going with the flow, seeing what chords, you know, sounded good along with the lead. And one thing led to another and, and the, the riffs were just flowing really, really well. man. I mean, that, that was just something that came together. And when we were, when everything was complete, I always like to ask the guys, like, hey, you know, what what would you guys feel when, when you play it, when we were playing the song or when we were making the riffs? What kind of lyrics do you guys think, you know? How, what were your emotions? I, I try to get – I like to get on everyone's level. I don't like to single anyone out or just kind of make my own stuff. Yeah. I always ask the guys first, what kind of – you know, what is it do you want the song to feel like? Whenever you listen to this song, what do you imagine? And there, you know, a lot of the times he's like, hey, man, whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to go, just just do it. Whatever you feel is right, you know, go for it. Okay. And then, I, you know, I asked Neil the same thing and, and then Mitch, and they're just like, yeah, just take the lead, man. Whatever you think is right, you know, we trust you. You know, we'll, we'll, and, you know we think that you'll, you'll come out with something good. And I started closing my eyes and thinking about it. And, um, yeah, I just imagined, you know, a soldier – being stuck in the trench and just kind of, I don't know, just kind of being, uh, being afraid, but being afraid to the point where he didn't care anymore and, um, feeling all of those emotions so much being so overwhelmed that you, that he just didn't even care anymore. And all of a sudden the day of peace came and, you know, they, he didn't have to worry about dodging bullets. He didn't worry. He didn't have to worry about seeing like seeing the red mist, you know, for instance, the red mist that, that, you know, the snipers would always want to see. And it was just almost like you listen to the song and although the music, although that song to other people might seem like, oh man, this is a really crazy loud and, you know, really distorted type song. Yeah. I like to feel like whenever I play that song, I feel like peace. 
I'll close my eyes and I'll, I'll feel peace and I'll feel like almost at one and to think of all of the struggles that people go through and just, you know, just for that one day that they get to feel like the, the freedom and the relaxation from what they're working for. That's kind of how a lot of, you know, that mindset came into play a lot when that, when, you know, we were together and, you know, writing all of that stuff. So we really feel like winter wins is, um, <clears throat> is definitely a, a really big song for us, you know, coming together and, and kind of, you know, feeling on the same note, feeling that peace and, and all that good stuff. It's a great, great inspiration for a song, man. And with yeah, that, thank you. this is Winter Winds.
winter winds. We're going to pick up a little bit later, um, usually during the songs. Instead of putting them in during the interview, I put them in in post-production. And I talk to the, the interviewee, see how they're doing. Um, and then I will bring us back in by saying, and that was such and such song. Um, I was talking to Julian and we were basically talking and having a good time that it kind of got forgotten. So this is in the middle ish of the conversation. We talked about scheduling some shows and how, you know, they went about doing that. Um, and how I used to do that when I was booking. It was just more words amongst friends rather than interview content. But as you hear with the next segment, Julian agrees with me 100%. Absolutely. No, I 100% agree with you, dude. You know, um, obviously, when I'm sure when you were younger, you still, you know, you had the same mindset as I did. You know, we wanted to be the rock stars. We wanted to be in the bands, and we wanted to, you know, try to make the big bucks and all that good stuff. But, you know, obviously when we got older, we got kind of, we, you know, reality kind of slapped us in the face. And, yeah. you know, we kind of knew that, you know, that wasn't going to be able to happen. And um, But, you know, for me, man, I kind of always felt like I wasn't in it for the money. If I, If there was an opportunity that came my way, where I can quit my job and pursue my dream of keep on doing it. And on top of that, still be able to support myself and my family, I would absolutely take it. But I mean, if I had to just start, you know, basically starve myself and be playing all of this music and not being able to support myself or my family, you know, I, it, it wouldn't be worth it to me. You know, I come to music for a salvation and to get away and to feel, you know, just to feel one with myself again and to get away from all of the BS that we have to deal with with our everyday lives. And, you know, for, for me, in my personal opinion, that's, that's really what I'm in it for. Yeah, man. I mean, it, to me, there are times where it feels like there's two people inside of me. Um, I have the nickname Ogre um, because I'm big and ugly, uh, as my <laughs> ex-singer would call. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of, it. yeah, it's, it's an awesome nickname. Um, but my there's... buddies, no, yeah, I got the same one. My my buddies call me uh, Baby Julian, and <laughs> you know, obviously, I got that gangster name because uh, obviously, it's definitely opposite. I'm like six three. <laughs> I'm like you know, close pushing to like you know three hundred. Yeah. So I'm right there with you, brother. <laughs> but um, the thing is, like like I was saying, it feels like there's two people. There's Andrew, which is who you're talking to right now. Loves yeah. music, loves the idea of music, and you know, just wants to be part of it whether it's in a podcast capacity playing min instruments you know promoting or you know making websites for bands or stuff like that like i just want to be part of it i love music so much i just want to give back to something and then i love that idea there then there's ogre that's like you know screw this shit um i'm gonna go I'm going to beat the hell out of the drums. Everybody's going to love me. This is what's going to happen, and I don't care what anybody says. I'm going with this as far as I can. And it's like, sometimes it's good hell to have... yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's good to have Ogre on your side because, you know, I've gotten bands... I opened for Five Finger Death Punch at the age of 18 before they were ever signed. Oh, you know? kick ass. Yeah. Get right on. It, it was because of Ogre, you know, um, that I had that opportunity, but it's because of Andrew that now I have this podcast and I, I've got a studio and I'm in what I feel is the best era of my musical career. And, you know, it, it just, I don't know. It, it takes a lot to try to compact those two into one person. Um, right. but sometimes it's impossible to do. So <laughs> it, depending on who you talk to, you'll, you'll get a different perspective. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. No, I, I love it, too. And that's, uh, that's definitely something that, you know, I can definitely fill you on, too. Because, you know, there'd be times, it, it just feels like I'm a whole different person, especially, you know. Uh, um, and would Ogre ever come out whenever you would get band practice or whenever you would just kind of like, you know, be, be playing shows and stuff? Is that when Ogre would, you know, really want to come out and shine? Yes. And, and the thing is, like, uh, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting back there, and it's tunnel vision. It's me and my drums. Um, nice. I know the set. I've practiced the set. I know my songs. Everything's good. But the thing is, the guy comes out, and 
I can I consider him kind of like Alice Cooper considers Alice Cooper. Um, there's a third person perspective. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because the thing is, um, I you put me in front of a mic in front of people and I freeze. Okay, but you put me yeah. behind drums in front of people and I'm a I'm a monster. You know, nice, I dude. know exactly yeah. what I'm doing. I know how to do it. I, you know, I can flip my sticks while I'm playing. I can Tommy Lee that kind of stuff, and you know, all of that. Oh hell and yeah! So that's I think that's where the change is. Ogre lives on stage. That's what it is. Is he lives on stage? He's not meant to be anywhere else except on that stage doing what I love. <laughs> and there then, it is, dude. No, yeah. I I know what you're saying. Hell yeah. Yeah, and and. It's it's fun to think of it that way because there are some times where Ogre can get a, a, away with things that Andrew can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I've, I've been there, too. Yeah, but Andrew's the, the brains behind the operation. Ogre wouldn't be yes, able sir. to survive without Andrew. It's like it's like the whole <laughs> kind of thing, and it's so amazing. Je- Dr. Yeah, Jekyll, dude. Mr. Hyde kind of thing. Yeah, uh, All oh, those yeah. analogies. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of got <laughs> off there. I'm actually going to put that part in because that's actually really awesome. <laughs> nice. Heck yeah, dude. All right, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so when you're on stage and everything, um, you're singing. Um, what's going through your head? Do you actually uh, – do you have to, like, think about the lyrics and everything and your chord progressions or anything? Or have you actually you – know, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Uh I've been in a pretty good amount of bands and uh, you know, I've always rather played lead guitars or rhythm guitars. I've never attempted to sing. I've never attempted to um, do backups on anything. You know, I've always wanted to, it's always been an idea. You know, I've always uh, would always need to bring it up to my ex bands and stuff, but we, you know, we just never made it happen. So bringing this, you know, on this new band, you know, for me to actually come out and try to sing, you know, at first, my bandmates were kind of iffy on it. You know, I showed them, you know, we kept on trying to, um, you know, try out different, you know, different vocalists, different vocalists, you know, some we kind of liked, other ones were just like, oh, no way, you know, we just didn't like the sound, you know. uh, When it comes to a specific sound, whether it be on guitar or whether it be on vocals or whatever, Bear is extremely picky on it, man. I mean, he has his set on one, and it's like, no. Like, he'll tell you just bluntly, like, no, man, this is how I want it to sound. we got to try to make it sound like this or as close to it as possible. And that's the kind of motivation and that's the kind of stuff that I like to hear or that I like to think about. So um, I I started just kind of screaming and singing on the side, you know, on my own time. I would just blast the music and try to practice or try to, you know, some of my vocals, you know, along with the bands that I liked and that inspire me. And um, I, I showed the guys one time, I'm like, screw it, man. You know, why don't we just become a four piece and, you know, I'll just do the vocals. I'll just do the vocals and I'll try. If I can't keep up with the lead guitars, you know, then I won't do it. That's what I, I remember. That's what I told Bear. I was like, how about this, man? Let me try it. And if I can't keep up with my own guitar playing and I can't keep up with the good rhythm of my vocals, I'll, I'll you know, I'll drop it. Because I remember I started bugging them about it. <laughs> and he goes, all right, fine. He goes, deal, go for it. Nice. And, you know, I, I remember I went home and I kept on practicing and practicing and, and it took me a good while. But, you know, once I kind of got the basic rhythm down, I was like, okay, you know, I could do this because I to be screaming and playing guitar. I mean, dang, that's, you know, that for me, that seems pretty difficult because, I mean, I would have, I would play and sing. I'd have my own little acoustic stuff on the side and, you know, try to, you know, play songs and all that good stuff. So I had that down pretty well, but when, you know, once it came to the vocals and trying to exercise your throat to go, you know, to, to exceed the limits of, you know, what you thought you can do, I mean, that was a challenge for me. But once I got it down and once, you know, once I showed the guys that, you know, I was able to do it and they actually started liking what, you know, what they were hearing, uh, that's what, that's what kind of, they were like, all right, you know, let's, let's do it, man. Let's keep it like this. And, you know, we like how it sounds, you know, let's do it like that. Nice. So when we, when we would play our shows, um, it wasn't really, I don't really have my own little zone. I, I don't really get zoned out. I just like to see everybody's reaction. You know, I'm looking <laughs> around and, you know, I see my bandmates, they're jumping off the walls. It's getting me super pumped. And the thing that I was 
it's kind of funny. I wasn't used to was, you know, I never used to sing or scream before. So I would be jumping off the walls with them. I would be joining them and, you know, banging my head until it falls off. But, uh, I, I remember I had to, um, I had to keep my, I kind of had to keep my sanity a little bit and I had to just kind of stay on the mic and, you know, whatever opportunity, whatever little breakdown I was able to do without screaming, I would just, you know, try to release it really quick, like, and then run up back to that mic and, you know, keep, you know, keep on doing my thing. So it was a bit of a challenge for me at first, but um, once I get up there, I just I just feel like, uh, you know, the lyrics and the music, they come very natural to me. It was huh. almost like uh, whenever I scream and play, it's almost like my vocals and my guitar playing are one. You know, I can tell that, uh, I can tell like, hey, I can't really, I can mess up. Obviously, everybody can mess up. But whenever I sing and play, I feel like, hey, my vocals, it's almost like I'm keeping myself um, on time with everything. You know, I'm, as long as I'm playing a certain riff, I know what lick I'm playing. I know where my vocals need to be at. I know, you know, what tempo I need to be at. And that's kind of what helps me out a lot. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. It, it's, I, I guess it's different things for different people. Um, I have one of my brothers, he's a guitar player, one of the best guitar players I've I've been able to work with. And awesome. um, when he sees me play the drums, he just looks at me and he goes, how the hell do you do that? And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just simple. And and when he starts playing solos and these crazy leads and, you know, all that, I'm just like, how do your fingers work that way? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I have a hard time making chord shapes with my fingers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you... You can play 30 second notes and it's a breeze. You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just sort of completely, you know, throw it out and and you know, like like nothing, make it look like cake. Yeah. And, and you know, it it I'm slowly learning how to play guitar. Um I I'm getting better every day, but I still have no idea how he does those kind of things. And you know, <laughs> it, it's great because, you know, if everybody learned the same technique or the same thing, It'd be really boring. And oh, absolutely. We'd live in a world of black and white. Yeah, and there's a gray area that is so wonderful to be in, <laughs> especially in music. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. All right, so as as the, the lead vocalist for your band, you have the lyrical um, side of things. Um, how do you write your lyrics? Um, is it a huge process, or do they just kind of fall out of you like your guitar riffs? You know what, man? I, it's it's the same thing when it comes it comes to the guitarist too. You know, I'll start thinking about something. Um, I'll start thinking about a, a you know something in particular. You know, I'm a very very big uh, Greek mythology type of, of guy. You know, um, I'm I'm in love with Greek mythology. You know, um, when it comes to like you know something as like 300 or something like. Uh, clash of the titans or something crazy like that you know anything that has relation to that i'll just you know i'm I'm in love with it dude and and i like to you know hearing that really inspiring type music that's in the background of those movies and you know seeing the like those crazy you know mythical creatures and you know like the war and the soldiers and you know all that stuff it's extremely inspiring for me and seeing something like that it pumps me up and I, it's almost like all of these, all of these little quotes will start popping in my head. I, I, I kind of like to call them like quotes, you know, oh, I'll nice. start thinking of things and it won't just be lyrics in general, or it won't just be, uh, it won't be like a story that I start writing in my head. It just, it's just like these really inspiring quotes and I kind of start putting them almost like puzzle pieces. I'll start putting them together and um that's kind of like my writing process and it doesn't always have to be about you know about like greek mythology or things like that it can be about somebody's struggle it can be the love between two people you know i'm not afraid i'm not afraid to um to kind of speak about something like that yeah and um anything that i feel that's inspiring to me and that speaks to me and that'll make me stop whatever i'm doing and think about something that's you know that's what'll kind of trigger off the um kind of triggers off the whole writing process that's what starts everything off all right so i have to go back i have to explain something to you um greek mythology is one of my favorite things in the world oh dude that's good um yeah and so the the story of of our kindred spirits is kind of you know 
it's getting tighter. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So I actually, it's such a, a big thing for me that I decided to write an album, actually an EP and an album about Greek mythology stories. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so my first one, it was called the Creation EP. It was dealing with the gods and and all of that. Um, the the title track was about the creation in the uh, the Greek um, pantheon and and the the mythological ways that everything came up. Um, right. And then there's uh, Sins of the Father, which is about Kronos and and Zeus. And then there's one about uh, I think it was Prometheus. Um, there's one about Eurydice. I believe her name is and her husband that the um the bard that that opens the gates of Hades and goes into okay. Hades to get his wife. Um, right. I can never remember his name, but that's my favorite story. Nice. And, um, you know when he looks back and she goes back into Hades and everything, you know the tragic love story? Yes. So one of the songs is based on that and it's called To Hell and Survive. And um that the the album is actually based on a story of about a Greek soldier um, going to war with the gods, and the gods are like um, crying prima donnas basically throughout the entire thing. Right. And it culminates with the song called Hades, which is basically my idea of Hades being um, basically coming straight out of a mental ward and giving like a guided tour of Hades. Oh, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. That's the thing I love about it too, because. You know, you have your own idea of what Hades will look like and what, you know, how it's described or what it's looked like. And and that's the greatness of it. You know, you can write something about it because that's your personal opinion. That's your personal world of what you think it'll look like. And you can give those images and those ideas to the listeners. And that's that's a that's a really big, you know, that's a really big inspiration type thing. And um, that's that's one thing I love because er- nobody's really gonna know exactly what they look like. Everyone's on- always gonna have their own personal image and their own personal thoughts of you know what that would look like. Yeah, and and that's the thing as a writer. Um, um, like I told you previous, I was a drummer, and it was only recently that I started writing and and recording my own music. As a writer, I kind of took it upon myself. I was like, you know everybody knows these stories or or people that know these stories know them in and out so instead of making hades like the the dark underlord and everything let's kind of make him whimsical and and kind of evil and weird and you know um i kind of thought of an an la guided tour with a a, a mental patient that had a few personalities uh, oh that's gnarly yeah, and the great the great thing was I got the singer for a, a local band called Low Crawl. Uh, his name's Nasty Nate. Um, okay. I actually got him to sing on that song, and I was just like, you know, those faces you make on stage. I want that to be what this sounds like. Nice. <laughs> and so he he <laughs> he did that, and he knocked it out of the park, man. And it's it's incredible. That's one of my favorite songs that I've written so far. Isn't it great when everything just kind of comes together? Yes, and I wrote the lyrics with him in mind, too. Like, his facial expressions. And, you know, it, it's it's fun things like that. Like, being able to, to use your imagination and write this kind of idea in the lyrics. Exactly. And, and like you, I, I, when I'm writing, I'm not really afraid uh, to, to go places. Um, I feel, especially with the lyrics, you need to be very open about your feelings and and your your perspective and um there's a few songs i've written that are probably going to be acoustic there's um one that is a five and a half minute song about depression and how i see it you know oh, it's that's, just, that's a that's awesome man you know to be able to you know kind of have your own thought and your own opinion you know about something strong like that you know, the depression is obviously it's a it's a ginormous thing right now. It always has been, but um, you know, to to be able to write a song and let alone have it to be five minutes, it's quite a bit. Uh, you know, that says something. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I 
that's one of the things I love about music. Um, when I first started out, I knew this gentleman that, that he tried to tear me down at every pass. Um, he, he was a local musician and he heard my first album, which granted it wasn't good. I was learning everything at the time. The only thing that I knew was the drums and, right. um, he would tear me down. He's just like, your vocals are crap. Your, your guitar is crap. You know, your, your bass doesn't even sound like a bass. I'm like, dude, you know, this is my first go around. The only reason I released it is because if I didn't release it, I was never going to do it again. Right. And you know, um, it's, I write the music because it, sometimes it's things I need to get out. Whether people hear it or whether people, feel it is kind of secondary to the fact that I need to get it out. Um, do you have oh, yeah. that feeling when you're writing um, your songs? Absolutely, man. I, I 100% agree with you, and I feel you on the same thing. I feel it like... I feel like whenever I'm inspired by something, usually when I see a um, like a really epic type of war movie and it has the the you know the crazy you know the really sad sounding but uplifting type of orchestra type feeling and when it's kind of like that chill that sends you you know the chills that you feel down your spine yeah and um you just feel almost like you just want to get up and run yeah. you know it's a yeah. feeling of you just you want to you want to sprint somewhere and whenever i write the lyrics to the to these four songs that I have and you know also mind you the, the other songs that you know that were that we've written before also um, those are the types of the, that's the type of feeling that I get and it's almost like you you know you're right exactly what you said you I have to get this out it doesn't really matter I don't really um, I'm not really thinking about like oh yeah what if people don't like it or man you know I, I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to reach these highs or scream that low or I can't even you know make a pretty melody to it you know with my clean vocals no I throw it all out the window it's like you know this is my idea I'm going to try to work with my bandmates to make this possible and I'm going to do whatever everything and anything it takes to be able to you know create the song so that way people can hear it or you know just to get it out there yeah yeah and and again that's one of the greatest parts about music is just that the the release of everything that you have I mean, you want to know somebody, you listen to their music. You you look at oh, their yeah. art, you know, something like that. It, it's just a release of the person you are. Um, Absolutely. Uh, can you talk about uh, seven years to the day? Yeah, <laughs> seven years to the day. Uh, that one, well, Bear actually helped me out through a really rough time that happened. Uh, we were you know, currently, uh, still writing some music. And, uh, I had a, I had a death, you know, a family member passed away. And I remember, you know, talking to him about it and it was, it was really rough. Just, you know, it was a really rough passing. And I remember going to him and kind of hanging out and it was, you know, some friends of ours and it had just happened. And uh, he says, you know what, man, let's, let's, let's go somewhere. Let's do something. And, you know, he started kind of messing around. You know, Bear's like a really competitive type person. And he goes, let's, uh, let's just go to, you know, to the Denny's and, you know, let's try a challenge, you and me versus, you know, all you can eat pancakes. Let's just do it. And I was like, all right, man. And I remember, you know, it was just, it was a blast, dude. I remember I was super, I was really upset. And it was almost like he did anything he could just to cheer me up. And, um, that was, you know, that was pretty awesome that I, I'll, I'll forever have a, a deep gratitude towards him and a really deep appreciation. And, um, so I kind of wanted to do something in return and, uh, it all kind of fell, it fell into place really well because we wrote the music first and I didn't really tell him what the, you know, what the song was about. I just said, Hey man, let me take, you know, I'll, I'm going to write the lyrics to this. And let me, you know, let me go ahead and just take it, you know, I'll let me behind the wheel and I'll, I'll just take, I'll take control. And he goes, all right, go for it. Nice. And seven years to the day is a song about, about Bear and his fiance and the love and the struggles that they have gone through. And, nice. uh, you know, 
it just goes to show that in the end, no matter what, the, you know, what's happened and what, what they've gone through, in the end, you know, even though they've been together seven years to the day, there it is. They're forever going to love each other. You know, it doesn't matter what what has happened, the hardships they have gone through together, um, and just the amount of love that they have for each other, you know, overcoming everything. And, you know, that's what I start off with. You know, we've moved beyond the point to which is owned by independence. You know, now knowing where where we stand, you know, they stand forever, you know, forever together. They're always going to remain and be, you know, be together. So that's kind of what that song, I base that song around them, around those, uh, you know, Bear and his, uh, his fiance. That is awesome, man. This is seven years to the day. We have moved beyond the point To which is owned by independence Now knowing where we stand It only seems like things are getting Getting greater from here
that was seven years to the day. All right, brother. So uh, for this segment, I, I want to start this out by saying um, I downloaded your songs before I contacted you, as I told you during one of the breaks. And I was listening, and my immediate reaction was very, very old Randy Blythe from Lav- Lamb of God as the vocal type. Um, I don't know if you mi- you meant to do that, but just the de- the depth of your growl just made me think of Randy Blythe. Oh. <laughs> nice, dude. No, yeah. that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> I've never really practiced along with him, but I know that uh, I know that I've had some buddies tell me that you know that my vocals do remind me of, of Randy. So that's, that's pretty gnarly, man. Any feedback or anything, you know, I never take anything into negativity that right there alone. That's, that's awesome. I, you know, I, I greatly appreciate that. Yeah, dude. I, I thought it was a nice little, um, kind of weirdo thing. Um, cause that was my first thought when I heard you guys, like I, I saw the name and I was like, that's, that's all, that's cool. Um, but then I heard you and I was like, damn it. He sounds like Randy. I, I can't walk away from this now. I have to pursue this. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. The, the, you know, I've always had, I've always been a big fan of the, uh, those really lows, you know, the, the, the heavy lows. And, uh, that's kind of mainly who I've always, you know, practiced along with. I remember the first band that I kind of broke out with my voice was, um, Viking metal, uh, the Viking metal band Amon Amarth. Oh, nice. I don't know. Nice. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. I practiced to them, you know, when I was in, uh, well, I was in high school. And I remember the day I was actually in my parents' uh, little, like, barnyard type, type of area and um, out in the country. And I remember it was me and an old friend of mine. And we were jamming out to Amon Mars, and I was totally meeting these guys. Or to my, to, you know, to my own knowledge, or to what I was thinking, I was like, "Holy crap, dude! I, I'm totally meeting these guys. You know, this guy screams right here." And uh, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what always inspired me to keep to my, you know, to my real heavy lows, or at least try to, you know, try to meet those lows. Yeah, man, Jonah Hag is he's brutal, man. Jeez. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it's funny. Uh, every time you say something, I'm like, oh, nice, nice. Um, so the last band I was in was in 2012, and lo and behold, it was a Viking metal band. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my my buddy, he's like, dude, you have to play the drums. You're groovy. You can play fast. I need you in this. And I was like, all right. So we had one show. We played three songs because it was our first show, and we never played again, which uh, tragedy. I, I'm telling you, oh. it's a tragedy. Um, a, fast forward a couple years, and he calls me, and he's like, hey, dude, so I have another idea for a project, and you're playing the drums. There was no asking. There was no, hey, can you make the time? There was, you're playing the drums. <laughs> he just called you and was like, hey, you got to be here. This is what you're going to do. Yeah. Do it. Make it happen. Yeah, so he come, <laughs> he comes through, and he's like, look. It's kind of like the Viking metal band, except it's a little bit slower and it's better production. And I'm like, no, you're you're kidding. He shows me one of the riffs and my mind was blown. I was like, all right, that's what we're doing. We're doing this. All right. You had the, yep, you already had the ideas shot in your head. Yeah. And, and I told him, I was like, because he wanted it to be a studio project first. And I've been talking him into this for like six months. It's like, dude you have to make this a live band. It's your baby. I understand that, but this is a live band kind of thing and you have to do this. Oh yeah. (laughs) So hopefully I'm, I'm praying to everything right now that, um, we actually get this band up and running because it's going to be, it's going to be so awesome. So very awesome. The way, yeah, the way you're describing it, man, that you're making it sound pretty gnarly. So I'm going to have to check something like, you know, check you guys out when you make it happen. It, it is gnarly, and I'm I'm telling you, we have, we've he's demoed all of his songs. Um, he's been writing the leads and everything. Um, uh, we actually have two songs finished. Um, one is the intro, which is like two and a half minutes, and that's the best intro I've heard in about a decade. And it's just an instrumental intro. There's nothing else going on. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> It's wow. I, I, I truly believe that if you guys hear this, you're going to be like, oh, that's so nice. Just put it on repeat, Pete, and let's go to sleep. That's all. 
<laughs> the, the, and I'm always looking for really good tunes like that. You yeah. know, uh, there's, uh, I always love to find little surprises like that. You know, uh, I know there's a, there's a couple of bands that I know of that, you know, they'll have, it's like heavy track, heavy track, you know, crazy circle pit, really fast type track. And then boom, it just like fades into like a really nice, like instrumental type melody. And you're just like, Oh man, it was just, yeah. it, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, man. And then um, bam, it, you know, that's the thing. Um, uh, at least for me, I know you have your version of what metal sounds like. Um, right. But for me, um, the best um, explanation that I can give is the new Slipknot CD um, or the new Machine Head CD from last year. Um, okay. And I don't know if you've heard either one of them all the way through, but they have really heavy tracks, really groovy tracks. And then there's some tracks that are really slow, really, you know, very um, emotional at times. And then there's really heavy tracks. And then there's kind of groovy tracks. And, you know, it, it's a bunch of different types of songs put onto a CD. And I think that's the best explanation of metal I can give. A good metal artist can actually jump rope with that line that divides heavy and, and not so heavy. And you know that, that that's just my my opinion on that deal. No, I like that, man. No, I can I can agree with you on that. To be able to, um, you know, jump from it's just like a different type of uh, a different type of way they play. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's all it all lines up into the same type of you know going super heavy to something that's just very like melodic, you know, really melodicness and really uplifting. And it's kind of like the you know the mix between both worlds where it makes it it makes it you know almost like one. Yeah. It, it all grooves really nice together. Like you said like earlier, that. it's like black and white, and you're you're making this gray area that's just so nice to be a part of. Oh, absolutely. And you, it's almost like you never want to leave. You know no, what I mean? Uh, never if at all. If, when you listen to a good tune, um, you know there's a band right now in Hearts Wake. Uh, I don't know if you've ever listened, uh, you know, heard them before, but they are coming out with some new stuff, and uh, that's another vocalist that I like to, you know, that I like to sing along to or at least practice with, and um, that is definitely a band that that's very experimental with their things. I mean, they're hard and they're heavy, but at the same time, they just have, you know, just that really, you know, it's not really as heavy but it still has that really groovy, you know, that grooveness to it. And, yeah. that, you know, that's something that I greatly appreciate. And I could be stuck on it, man. You know, I want to live in that gray area because, <laughs> you know, they just, it's almost like that, you know, their freaking music, it just talks to me. And I just want to be living in it all the time. You know, I, you know, I'll be, I'll be at work, boom, and they're in my head. I'll be in my car. That's the first thing that I put on. Yes, you know, I got to yes. get that little, you know, I have to get that little, um, addiction out of the way i gotta hear them and sing along to them and then i'm like oh all right i'm fine i'm good nice man that that's what i do too now i have a couple questions for you they're just uh fun little you know weirdo questions um <laughs> okay so when i get up in the morning i usually try to put on a song that just makes me want to hurt the day um by that i just kind of you know get up start running and just make the day wish it had never risen kind of deal. <laughs> um, yeah. Dude. For, for me, one of those songs, um, the first song that I ever heard or felt this way about was determined by Mudvayne. Um, you oh, put, nice. it, yeah. If you put that song on when you're in the shower, or you're getting ready for work or on the way to work, you're like, dude, I'm going to make today. Uh, I'm just going to do this, you know, kind of deal. Um, oh yeah. Are are there any uh, songs like that that you do to get pumped up or or like work out or or something like that? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I would have to say the let me see. The song in particular would have to be um shoot. Probably not uh 1990 from uh Life Ruiner. Really? You know, that band, yeah, that band is uh you know, I'm not a all of their music I don't really connect with, but that song in particularly, it just, it's inspiring. I mean, it, it opens up with the singer, you know, reading a quote, 
you know, talking yeah. about life and, you know, just always live it to the fullest because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And when I wake up and I put that song on, you know, and then, um, mind you too, I, <laughs> I kind of have to listen to it on my headphones because I'm, I'm up, like, I got to be up around four o'clock in the morning and, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I got a really early shift, but well, the second that I'm in the car, I mean, I'm blasting that sucker, one, to keep myself awake, and two, to just like, get ready for the day. Yeah. And, um, you know, it starts off with the singer singing uh, or, you know, talking and, um, you know, just talking about life and how, you know, we're going to get hurt, we're going to be happy, and, you know, things are always, in the end, things are always going to work out to how we make them. You know, if nice. we want we if we want to be successful and we want to do something, you know, it's all, in the end, it's all up to us to make it happen. You know, if we're gonna get hurt in the process, obviously everybody does. Everyone's gonna be upset at you know for whatever reason. But uh, you know, speak out, be sincere. You know, love someone, and in the end, just live life to the fullest. And then all of a sudden, bam! You you just hear the drums kick in, and then he just does, does a shout, and the whole band just starts going at it. Oh, and wow. that right there alone, that that's what gets me pumped up the most. That's what actually helps me start my day a lot of the time. Yeah, man, that, that's I I love songs like that. That um, Hate Breed. I don't know if you like them, um, but yeah, Hate Breed is one of those bands where if you turn on one of their songs, any one of them, it's gonna make you want to one either kick something until it's destroyed. Or you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna want to start the day and make it count for something, you know? Yep, exactly. And I'm definitely some. I'm I'm one of those, you know. Every time I want a reason, I always want to find a good reason to make the day mine, you know. Yeah. And and that's kind of like what you said too. Is you want to make the day yours. You want to be able to take the world by your hands and craft it to what how, however you want to do it you know you know you're not you're not going to let the day get to you and piss you piss you off or you know make yourself have a bad day if you start the day off right and you you know you want to own it you're going to be able to all you have to have is the right mindset yeah man and and again uh, that's all the greatness of music putting that power you know reinforcing that power inside of your head you know it, it makes absolutely it makes everything wonderful um Chow, so, hell yeah <laughs> speaking of that can you talk about the song my body yeah man my body um i actually found that one to be uh just more of like a more like a rough uplifting type song you know the chorus says even though you know we've got this far just know that we've tried so hard you know if you want something if you want to achieve something in life if there's a goal that you want to do whether it be say you're saving up for a drum kit say you're saving up for a car yeah. or say you're you know you're you're working your ass off just to get a better job you know just know in your head just know that you've gotten this far because you've tried so hard you've tried your you know you worked your you, you worked your ass off and you know, you blood, you put your blood, sweat, and tears in order to, you know, to achieve whatever it is that you want to do, yeah. whether it be a new drum kit, a new amp, a new guitar, a new car, you know, or shoot, I mean, even setting yourself up for life, you know what I mean? <laughs> trying to set, you know, trying to do something good for yourself. That's kind of what I, I you know, went about with this song. Um, obviously, uh, there's a, there is one part, uh, a bridge that says, um, you know, I've said I've told you so, well, then you've told me so, you know, I feel so helpless. And that's kind of like, everybody's going to have their breaking point, you yeah. know, whether you're going to school, whether you're having a job, say you're behind on something, behind on bills or whatever, you know, it could be anything, man. You, everyone's going to have a breaking point eventually. And, you know, it kind of talks about somebody's struggle and reaching the breaking point but in the end they're going to get you know get themselves back up they're going to walk you know walk the walk and even though every footstep might feel like miles upon miles you're going to achieve your destination you're going to reach your goals as long as you keep a strong mindset and as long as you keep on having that determination all right man this song is called my body <laughs> Yeah! 
This interview had a second time where we kind of forgot to do the whole intro thing again. Uh, we just started talking. Um, this is actually what would have been cut out, but this right here I'm going to keep in because this is the point of this podcast. Julian was the perfect example of why I started this. This segment right here, this whole beginning part, was exactly the reason why I wanted to start a podcast for local music. Because we help each other, we grow stronger. We don't, we fall on our faces. This mentality that Julian showed is what I think every music genre, every musician, every promoter, every concert goer should have. We're all in this together. You want something to get bigger. You want something to work out. You have the power to do that. And Julian showed exactly the kind of man he is fantastic dude i had i had one quick question for you yeah go ahead man uh when we're doing all of the uh you know when we're doing all like the contact information and all that jazz would it be possible if i were to uh you know um drop like a uh well see a friend of my a friend of ours she's a um she's a local mc Okay. Uh, she's a female MC here in Sanger, but she's played a whole bunch of shows all around Fresno, and she's continued to play some shows. Uh, she's the one that took the time to actually record us and, you know, uh, have the patience with us and all that good stuff. So okay. I was just wondering if I can, you know, drop her name and all that good stuff. How about this, man? You can say thank you to her. Cool. Give her contact info if she's recording. Um but afterwards, if you want to send me her info so I can talk to her and do this with her. Oh, dude. And she will be 100% for it, man. I um, think that would be a really great one for you. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Um, I haven't really dabbled in, in rap or, or anything like that yet. Um, but having an MC, that, that sounds pretty interesting. It's something I don't know and something I can learn from. So if you want to do that, kind of like name drop and, and let people know that, that she's out there. Um, you can do that and then just send me her info and, and I'll get her on the show too. Oh, heck yeah, dude. That's awesome. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, uh, no worries, man. You know, like I said, man, I'm, I'm looking for people to talk to and I love talking about music and this is why I do that. And, you know, 
if she can teach me something I didn't know before, um, which I'm pretty positive she'll be able to, it'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys can hit it off, man, because she was actually, uh, she started in band also. Um, oh, nice. You know, she did band. Uh, she was in a, a, a couple of bands, kind of like The Strokes. Oh, you nice. know, she was in a, okay. you know, a band like that. And then she went from like being The Strokes, so, you know, playing music like that to that genre to just like, all of a sudden, bam, oh, yeah, I decided to be a female MC, And it just, like, took everybody by shock, but it was, like, one of the best, uh, you know, one of the best shocks that, you know, that all of her friends, including myself, that got. So I think you I think you guys would really hit it off, dude. I'll, I'll absolutely shoot the information your way, though. See, that that's another thing. Me and my wife, we were just talking about uh, female artists and musicians. Um, oh, nice. There, there's, uh, there's a mentality that goes in metal and, and some of these genres where like females aren't as good as men. And right. Um, there's a, a glass ceiling for some stupid ass reason for these females <laughs> that are amazing <laughs> at their jobs or at their yeah. talents and they just can't get through. And right. my wife, she's, she's a self-proclaimed feminist. You know, she, she believes in equal rights and everything. And um, my whole deal is if you're a musician, you're a damn musician. There should be no defining factor other than you play music, you want to get your music out, and that's what you're going to do. Yeah. And, you know, um, in the metal world, there's bands like um, um, In This Moment and Butcher Babies and um, Kitty and Wendy O and Lita Ford. <laughs> all, of, all of these bands have females in them, and all of these bands rock in their own damn way. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I would... I would love to talk to this woman because if she changed genres, firstly, had somebody actually shocked that she changed to MC um, because she's a woman and then made it her own, you know, that right there is an inspiration to all of us. And I think that would be badass. You are going to definitely, you're, you're definitely in for a treat, dude. You know, uh, she's a big inspiration to me because she has put so much hard work and so much money into herself, let alone her recording. Yeah. She puts every single thing that she has ever brought out to the community. She put it for absolutely free. She oh. hands out her, she hands out her albums for free. She has like these little business cards where you can like, you know, there's like a little link and you can go to the computer and download the whole album for free. She has like stickers that she throws up for free. I mean, anything and everything, man. She, ne she doesn't ask anybody for anything, any kind of money and not even donations. She just, you know, she, her mindset is like, Hey, you want to come check out my music? Here it is. Let me know what you think. And you know, if you like it, that's good. Keep on listening and just enjoy it, dude. That is awesome. And uh, you know. That, that's that, why I was like, you know what, when when she helped me record this, you know, this EP with, with my band, I was like, you know what, man, I'm not going to try to, you know, get some money off of it. I'm just going to, I want everybody to download it, listen to it, and give me feedback. If they like it, that's great. If they have some flaws with it, let me know. So that way I can see, if, you know, if, if I agree with it, I'll, I'll make some changes and all that good stuff. Well, and okay. that's kind of something that, you know, she inspired me to do. Well, that, that is truly amazing, and, and like I said, I would love to be able to have her on the show and talk to her, especially as, if she is as awesome as you say she is, um, then that, that right there, I need to have her on the show. I, I need people like that. You got like to, that. dude. You got to, man, yeah, because she's played, last year alone, I believe, because uh, we talk on a regular basis, and uh, just the other day we were talking, and she said last year alone, I think she played about 60 shows. Dear God. 60 shows here in, yeah, in California, whether it be at the Babylon, whether it be in Southern California, whether it be like in, in Santa Cruz. I mean, this chick just makes it happen, man. And on top of that, she was going to Fresno State full time. Oh, wow. Good for yeah. her. That yeah, is, dude. So that she, is applause worthy right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could just tell how busy this chick was, you know. And uh, she's yeah, she's pretty awesome. So I, uh, you know, absolutely. After after we're all done here, I'll give you all of her contact information. And if you guys can make it happen, I think it. You know, I think you guys will definitely hit it off. Yeah, seriously, man. I, I'll do whatever it takes to get her on the show. I, I have to talk to this woman. Uh, I just by <laughs> hearing what you're saying, I have to talk to her. I have to talk music with her. I have to, you know, uh, at least, you know kind of vampire some of her enthusiasm for music so that i can finish writing my album right now 
Oh, there. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, exactly. And you know, whatever. Uh, the cool thing is, is you know, obviously she she's not a, a a big you know metal fan or anything. But if I ask her to to take a listen to the music and and you know ask Lee what she thinks. She'll take it not from a person's perspective as like, oh, I only listen to this genre, but she will sit down and listen to the music and give you a musician from one musician to another type of opinion. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I've slowly been trying to train my wife that way um, because up until uh, I think a month and a half ago, I didn't have this podcast idea. So right. she was the only person that I had on a daily basis to talk music with. And so... okay. <laughs> my wife being the wonderful lady she is um yeah we i bought the demon hunter cd that came in came out last year and okay she, she heard it she loved it and we were listening to it and she's like i love this song i just i don't know like why i love it so much and i was like no really like what what is it is it the music she's like it's the hi-hat <laughs> <laughs> of all the things she, she's like it's the hi-hat the way the drummer uses the hi-hat i just i don't understand what he's doing but i know that it's great i'm like oh this is why i married you <laughs> <laughs> and that right there alone is the reason why you know why music can bring people together you yeah. know what i mean i yeah. mean there there it is your you know your lady is sitting there saying how much she she's love you know in love with the song just because of the way you know the drummer is just you know playing his instrument or yeah. playing the music it just speaks to them a certain way that's awesome man that's how me and my lady definitely came together yeah. you know there was um uh there was a band i i think you'll i think you can you'll dig them too they're called uh corelia corelia yeah uh they're pretty awesome dude i mean i that, that's actually how i found out about phineas i went to go to a show in um shoot where was it it was in downtown los angeles and they played a show and uh Corellia actually opened up for Phineas but you know me and my lady at the time you know we went down there just to check out Corellia and uh, you know let alone you know I like killed two birds with one stone I found two great bands that were my great inspirations you know today yeah and uh <clears throat> that was definitely one you know we definitely picked on that and um just for her you know to find to find a lady that I connected with everything else with but let alone the music on top of that oh yeah I, that's where that's where we kind of drew to, you know drew ourselves together really well yeah man um uh, I've said this before, and I will go on record saying it again. My wife is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been very lucky. Um, she she told me specifically when I started thinking about building a studio, her exact words were, stop being a bitch and do it already. Yeah. yeah. For a wedding <laughs> present, for a wedding present, she got me a Dimebag Daryl Signature ML. Um, and that was just for wow. our wedding. For, oh, Chris man. for Christmas this last year, she got me a, a ML um, that wasn't a dime signature. It's just an ML. Um, but yeah, she is. She's amazing. She 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 will literally tell me if my riffs suck, and she'll tell me to do them over again. You know, and and that's what you need, man. Like, yeah, that and, you know what I mean. And that damn your lady, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, she's, she's a keeper and. That's the great thing about it too, you know. I'm I, I want to kind of want to build my own little studio and something where I can just kind of build off my own because you know it's difficult if you're you know you have your your guitar you know Bear he works uh, he works nights also oh. and his nights are really heavy yeah. so the times you know our schedules kind of don't meet until you know we kind of find some open time and uh, if I have an idea at home and I want to lay down some lead and some rhythm on top of that. I mean, I you know, it's difficult, especially if you don't have the right kind of equipment or some, you know, something small. So she's definitely been on my side and said, hey, you know, let's start saving up for this and this. You need, you know, you know let's get yourself this computer that you want, and this is how we're going to do it. And I'm just like, oh, man, I love you so much. <laughs> hey, man, um, I'll tell you right now, um, I've been there in the, the whole beginning stages, the, the research stages and everything. Right. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever – uh, this is not even pertaining to the podcast. This is musician to musician. If you have any questions about getting a studio together, what you need, what what is more important, you know, what will get you going, um, 
you call me, you text me, email me, Facebook me, whatever it is to do to contact me, and I will give you all the information you need. I had, yeah, brother. Thank I, you, man. No worries, man. I had nobody to do this. It took me six months to learn about everything that I needed. Oh, yeah, holy six, crap. Six months, I finally got to where I had everything that I needed. I sat down, and I didn't know how to use any of it. Yeah. And so if you listen to my first album, you're like, oh, God, what is this guy's problem? But, it, you know, I was learning the ropes. <laughs> um, now I, I know um, how to get around, how to do what I want, and it's, it's very nice. Um, but, oh, yeah, man, dude. like if you need help with getting the information or what I think would best help you in a scenario, by all means, contact me and you will have, uh, I will give you my best opinion and that will only be my opinion. You can go against it. You can find other opinions, but I will do whatever I can to help you because having a home studio completely changed my life. Oh, I can, I, I can tell, you know, I can tell just by speaking with you, you know, in this short time that we've had, you know, I can tell that you were able to do the things that you, you, you wanted to do. You were able to make your ideas into reality. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I've been wanting to do for so long. You know, damn, I, I greatly appreciate that, man. You don't know how, you don't know what that means to me. Oh, that's that's dude, awesome. Dude, completely. Just, just take me up on it when you need it. Um, that, that's all. I'm here to help you, man. I really am. Um, like I said, I'm not doing bands right now. I'm trying to talk my brother into doing the uh, the Viking Metal. Um, I'm writing a, an album right now. But, you know, if I can help you, you know, achieve your goal, then I think I'm doing right. I'm going down the right right path that I need to be. Absolutely, so, dude. Thank I really appreciate it. And, That's and awesome. When, when I tell you this, when I tell you that, that having a studio changed my life, it's not um, it's not one of those things where I'm just blowing smoke. Um, right. Literally, my whole entire outlook on my life changed. I was able to go, oh, my goodness. There are unlimited options in this studio. There's unlimited options for me. I can do whatever the hell I want because I am an adult. And, you know, I, if I work towards it, I got it. And hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it, Damn it. I can just... I can just hear it in your voice, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can hear the just the accomplishment of, of, you know, wanting to do what, you know, making that studio, making it happen. I can hear it just by your voice, you know? Like, damn, that's what I want right there. That's, that's what I'm striving for. Yeah, man. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, it's not easy. Um, sometimes it's not cheap. Um, sometimes it gets really lonely and, and boring and things like that. You know, all, all of the bad stuff is in there. Right. But it, it's finishing that song and finally making it an MP3 and going, look, I've I've made this. Like this is what I've created. Yeah. I did this by myself. Hell yeah. Yeah, and and it it makes the entirety of all of the crap that you went through go away. It's like that whole joke. <laughs> it's the whole joke with your crappy job and you get the paycheck and all the entire past two weeks goes away because you have the money. Exactly. Yeah, but but this is so much more than that. There's there's no money involved. There's you know you're pouring money into it, really. But no, you know. yeah, yeah, I, I I totally know what you mean, man. I got a buddy of mine. He works at Apple. He's been at Apple for about three years now. So oh, wow. he's telling me that. Yeah, he's telling me that. You know, he can. He's like, yeah, man, I'll help you out here. I can, you know, help you take this away, and I can, you know, do this and this. And he's always telling me all the time, all these different Apple products that are coming out and you know uh like these crazy you know these crazy like you know processors and this lightning speed that's going to help me in the recording whenever i'm ready to purchase and i'm just like yeah dude that's awesome you know whenever i whenever i got the big bucks though (laughs) yeah apple's nothing to mess around with (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) to be be completely honest the computer i'm using i got at walmart for four hundred dollars nice dude and Um, that that alone that says that says something well, that, that says something, but I need to upgrade. I'm not going to lie. I need an upgrade. But, you know, it does what I need. And, and that's one of the, the things you, you've got to understand early on. If you have enough to actually do something, um, then do it. Uh, don't make excuses. Just run with it, man. Uh, right. you, you'll learn your equipment. You'll learn what you can and can't do and just go with it. And, and, Absolutely, you know, dude. It, it, makes, it makes the world go around. It really does. No, I love that. Well, I know you gotta. Uh, I know you gotta get going pretty soon, man. Yeah, so I yeah. know you want to go into that that last one. The second. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm I kind of got you, on. 
hey, when when musicians, when you know musicians like you know like you and myself, when we come together, I mean, dude, I didn't even know you like a couple hours ago. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. just a person that hit me up for a project, and all of a sudden, who knew? Who knew that you and I look, you know, like the Greek mythology and and then you know the Viking metal and all that good stuff. Yeah. It's... All of a sudden, you know, a 20 minute conversation turns into like a almost two to three hour conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's 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 amazing. Um, that's actually yeah. that's another reason why I like doing these podcasts. There, there's a point in the conversation where you can feel feel it tilt to where you're not just people talking anymore. You're actually kind of got a camaraderie going on. Yeah, and it, it's very very fun and very interesting to see where that point will be. Like you, exactly. it was very early on. Like before yeah. the recording, it was very early on. Some people it takes a little while. Others like mm-hmm. you, um, yeah almost immediately it's it's just really cool to have <laughs> absolutely dude absolutely all right. all right man well since i gotta wrap up because i have a stupid job <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, i'm with you there brother um how can people get a hold of you um where can they find your amazing music and where can they they start trying to book you for shows that are legitimate <laughs> Uh, they can definitely hit us up on our um, on our Facebook, you know, when all is conquered. Um, if you guys want to check out our, you know, our music and you guys want to download it for absolutely free, you can go on Bandcamp, uh, www.bandcamp.com slash when all is conquered. Um, I do have the links on our Facebook page. So if you want to go ahead and check out our Facebook page and do lead right down to the links, um, you guys can go ahead and contact us. Um, you know, shoot us a message. Uh, I'll I'll get back to you immediately. It'll notify me on my telephone, and yeah. bam, you know, we'll start yeah. it right then and there. And um, and yeah, we're we, you know we're definitely we have enough music to where we are show ready. We're ready to play some shows. And if you know any anybody that's booking some bands, you know, wants to uh, go ahead and go ahead and contact us, you know, please feel more than more than free to do so. Yes. I will make sure um, when this show does come out, I will promote the hell out of you guys because it's been <laughs> awesome. Um, one more thing before we get going. Um, during the break, you said that you uh, you wanted to tell me about a wonderful lady. Um, oh, yes, absolutely. This is the uh, time. She, Please tell me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The um, wonderful lady that actually got to, uh, you know, have the patience with us <laughs> during the recording uh help us record her name is uh ronnie taylor okay and she is the one who helped us record this uh she's actually a female mc um straight out of sanger nice. and um she goes by the name of kaleidoscope okay so uh, yeah she records anyone and everyone um she's always a, you know she's always available uh, always looking for, you know, always meeting new artists and trying to help them out as much as they can. Um, she helped me out uh, substantially, and uh, I am extremely happy that, you know, that she was able to help me and get my get the recording, you know, for, for the band and all that good stuff. You know, she was very, very patient with us, and, nice. um, you know, for that, I, I thank her a lot. So yeah, if man. anybody has, you know, any wants to go ahead and hit her up if they're looking for, you know, any studio time or anything, go ahead and look her up on Facebook, Ronnie Taylor or Kaleidoscope, and go ahead and hit her up. Wonderful, man. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Um, at Right right now, the recording is at one hour and 32 minutes. Um, it does not Excellent. feel like that at all. Um, thank you so much. Felt like so 20 much. minutes to me. Yeah, yeah very <laughs> much. And believe it or not, the, the recording, before we recorded it was a 20 minute conversation too <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right all right brother well thank you so much for being on the show i appreciate your time your effort and your enthusiasm for uh, my idea and talking to me about all the craziness um i, I appreciate hey. it and good luck with Absolutely, everything brother thank you man i greatly appreciate it i i you know i thank you very much for for the idea that you're trying to do trying thank to bring you. everyone together you know, I just want to—I just want to let you know that I support you, and I got Thank your you. back 100%. And you know, if there's anything that you know that I can ever do, you know that I got you. And uh, you know, let's go ahead and start doing this. Let's start bringing these musicians together and hearing all these wild stories that you're going to be having in the future. Thank you, brother. All right, man. Have a good night, man. 
Thank you, sir. You do the same. Later. And that was when... And that was Julian from When All Is Conquered. I know, right? Pretty awesome. Guy was such a fun, fun interview to have. If you're looking for a new band, When All Is Conquered is one of the many, many awesome bands I have on this show. They currently have their EP called When All Is Said and Done out on Bandcamp. All you have to do is look them up, go to the URL that was stated in the interview, or follow the link in the show notes for this episode. When you download their EP, leave them some love. Comment, like, subscribe, add, whatever it is that you need to do. Let them know you enjoy their work and what they were doing, and let them know that you heard this interview at the Local Music Revolution. This is why I'm doing it, is to promote bands that are as amazing as When All Is Conquered. Please, go and check them out. Check out all of the bands that I have on this show. These guys are amazing. I would not have them on the show if I didn't think there was something that these guys needed to share. There was some reason why these bands needed to be heard. As for me, I am very, very interested in all of your feedback. I love hearing about what people liked about the show, what they didn't like. Julian just texted me a couple days ago telling me that he really, really liked just a random statement in one of the shows. Like, it's amazing that you guys catch these things, and it's it's so, so humbling to have you guys listen and react to what I'm doing. You can contact me at facebook.com slash the local music revolution and on Twitter at TLMR podcast. The podcast can also be followed at the local music revolution dot wordpress dot com. There will be so many updates as soon as they're done. I have so many things I want to put up there. I, I don't think a weekly episode is good enough for what my idea is. I want more content, but I'm only one person. I need to write it, I need to edit it, and I need to make sure that it's good enough to have on the blog. You can also subscribe, rate, and comment on the podcast. Just go to the podcast section of your iTunes store and search The Local Music Revolution. The podcast will show up. Commenting and rating is such a crucial part of trying to promote this podcast because that helps my ratings and that in turn helps more people see the podcast in the store so please when you are there in itunes leave a rating leave a comment it's greatly appreciated for all you android users the local music revolution is on stitcher now that's how i listen to podcasts on my phone i'm completely serious it's a pretty awesome way to do it all you have to do download the app sign up using facebook or google or a regular email once you're signed up search the local music revolution and you can listen to all of the past episodes all of the future episodes and stay with us because there's so much more that i want to do with this podcast i'm always looking for bands and artists and companies that help these bands and artists. If you are one, if you are someone that knows of one, get a hold of me at the local music revolution at gmail.com. I will gladly start the process of getting you on the show and getting an interview recorded. Thank you again for listening. You guys truly amaze me. Just a simple idea I had turned into something awesome. So many people are just amazing and supportive. Thank you. Next Thursday, I will have, as mentioned in this podcast, Ronnie Taylor, a.k.a. Kaleidoscope, her MC name. Um, Whatever you want to call her, she is a badass. She is awesome. She decided to call and do an interview with me, which I am truly grateful for. 
you get to hear that next week on Thursday. Until then, this is the Local Music Revolution. I am Ogre. You are awesome. Take care and be good.